Korriban is the sole planet in the Horoset system. It was the original homeworld of the Sith species and a sacred planet for the Sith Order. The planet was initially discovered by a group of exiles who were cast out of the Jedi Order. A Force-sensitive human, Ajunta Paul, was a member of the Jedi Order. Undergoing training in the ways of the Force, Paul first attained the rank of Jedi Knight, then attained the rank of Jedi Master, and began studying the ways of alchemy. Eventually, through his studies, Paul discovered the secret of creating and shaping life. Fearful of this power, the Order deemed it an abomination of the Force, and sought to erase all practice of it. The Jedi High Council barred the teachings of Paul and his followers, deeming him a pawn of the dark side of the Force. Angered by what they deemed Jedi arrogance, Master Paul and his followers declared war on the Order, beginning a century-long conflict that would be known to history as the Hundred Year Darkness. Captured by his former comrades in the Jedi Order, Master Paul and his followers were stripped of their ranks and their weapons and exiled from space controlled by the Galactic Republic. Traveling from one planet to the other in search of a habitable world, the exiles eventually discovered Korriban on the Outer Rim. Venturing out into the wastes of the desert planet, the exiles were intrigued. Upon discovering the world was home to a Force-sensitive species known as the Sith, who, while relatively primitive when compared to the Dark Jedi, were quite creative in their knowledge of the Force. This Sith species had a king who initially resisted the Dark Jedi's attempts to obtain their knowledge and subjugate them. However, Paul managed to recruit the King's Shadow Hand, or the Second in Command, to their side. This resulted with the death of the King. Ajunta Paul executed him with his sword. Afterwards, the Sith species, in awe of Paul and his followers' ships and technology, as well as their skills in manipulating the Force, quickly came to worship the visitors to their planet, hailing them as gods. Paul and his followers then subjugated the natives, and his new Sith subjects revered him as their Genari, meaning Dark Lord. As the first Dark Lord of the Sith, Ajunta Paul founded the first Sith Empire and expanded it onto other worlds. Paul eventually died after serving the Empire. His body was returned to Korriban, where it was placed in a massive tomb in what would come to be called the Valley of the Dark Lords. These Dark Jedi who remained on the planet after Ajunta Paul's death elevated themselves to a godlike status on Korriban, becoming the rulers of the Sith people. As years passed, and interbreeding occurred between the Dark Jedi and the Sith species, the term Sith came to mean not only the original inhabitants of Korriban, but also their Dark Jedi Masters. The meaning of the word Sith evolved from a species into a belief. For a long time, the existence of the Sith Empire they built was unknown to the Galactic Republic. Under the power of Sith magic, this desolate world became more hellish and dangerous. The very energy of the planet is said to be tainted by the dark side. The Sith Lords of Korriban erected huge palaces and burial complexes to honor their fallen Dark Lords. Their mentality, the beliefs of these Sith, often relied on fighting a common foe, for without a common enemy to unite them, the Sith would turn on themselves, fighting for the power of the individual over the power of the whole, for only the strongest could lead. A millennia later, a great war took place, and these Sith were defeated. After the fall of the Sith Empire, the planet lost much of its prominence in the galaxy, eventually falling off the galactic star charts for a thousand years. 
and once more, Korriban became forgotten and still. Millennia after Ajuntapol's death, the Jedi Knight Revan entered Ajuntapol's tomb to retrieve the Sith Lord's sword, which was said to hold great power. At that moment, Ajuntapol appeared as an ancient spirit before him. Ancient, he asked. Has it been so long that you need to use the word ancient? The spirit seems to have been in anguish for millennia. He told Revan of his actions as a Sith. He told his story with disappointment and shame, and revealed that it was not the Jedi who had defeated them. It was not the Jedi who brought down the Sith Empire. Is it not obvious what we did? We destroyed each other. We desired the secrets of each other to increase our power. We battled until finally a fortress rained down on top of us. And so here our old secret is buried and none of us hold it anymore. Is that not right? Our power fled. Oh, what became of us? Do, do the Sith still thrive? Did they ever return? So hungry had they been for power that they betrayed one another to obtain it. This led the Sith Order closer to death, and Paul felt nothing but remorse. Revan removed the Dark Lord's blade, but Paul warned that if Revan was wise, he would not keep it, for a junta Paul's blade was said to bring destruction to anyone who wields it. After that, Revan convinced Ajanta Paul to turn away from the dark side and return to the light. Letting go of his pain and anguish, Paul returned to the light and became one with the Force, finding peace at last. Many years later, in the time when Mitra Surik and Kreia traveled together, Korriban had been in a still abandoned state, carrying the wounds and markings of those who came before. This was a time when the Sith stood strong and had almost exterminated all the Jedi, but the surface of Korriban lay empty and forgotten. There's much that would draw a Jedi to Korriban at this time, the resting grounds of the ancient and more recently departed Sith contained many teachings believed lost. When they visited Korriban, seeking for the lost Jedi who were hiding from the Sith, they were firstly faced with the Valley of the Dark Lords, too vast to ignore. There, four main tombs stood tall, each representing an entire complex of rooms and corridors, so vast were they. These four tombs belonged to some of the greatest Sith Lords that ever lived. One of them belonged to the legendary Ajanta Paul, the first Sith Lord. Kreia told Surik of what Revan did in Ajanta Paul's tomb, how he directed the spirit towards the light, but Kreia disapproved of Revan's redemption of a Junta Paul, believing it to be cowardly as it meant turning away from one's own nature, a betrayal of the self. Rather than believing that dying in peace and becoming one with the Force could belong to anyone who truly wanted it, Kreia felt that redemption was a form of spiritual collapse a fall that few recovered from. Ajanta Paul was only one of the four Sith Lords in the Valley of the Dark Lords. Tulak Horde was another. Chronologically speaking, his reign took hundreds of years after Ajanta Paul. Known as the Lord of Hate and Master of the Gathering Darkness, Tulak Horde was a Dark Lord of the Sith who ruled during the early Sith Empire, commanding great armies and possessing a mastery of the dark side of the Force and lightsaber combat, which left him nearly unrivaled. He wielded a lightsaber with an orange-colored blade. During battle, Horde wore a black mask, making him a fear-inspiring sight. He was extraordinarily competent in the matters of telekinesis. A master of sorcery, he was known to have once pulled an entire vessel down from the sky. 
Lord Hord continued his endeavors into the arts of Sith sorcery, authoring many tomes of knowledge and crafting his personal holocron. Rumored to have known the secret to eternal life, Tulak Hord scattered much of his teachings in hidden and hard-to-reach locations to ensure only the worthy could obtain his knowledge. Discovering and conquering the Drummond system, it was believed that the Sith Lord conquered over a hundred worlds for the Empire. He only had one apprentice who came to learn much from the great Sith. But like most Sith of that time, Tulak Hord is said to have been killed by his apprentice. At some point following his death, his loyal minions constructed a massive tomb for their fallen master in the Valley of the Dark Lords on Korriban. Entombed with him were several tomes of his writings, his holocron, and his mask. Upon inquiry from Surik, Kreia remarked that Horde was the greatest lightsaber duelist of the Sith Lords, going on to say that his skill was considered remarkable even for his time, when many true lightsaber masters lived. Kreia also revealed that if Surik had to face an ancient Sith Lord in combat, she would learn that we are as children playing with toys compared to the prowess of the old masters. Tulak Horde single-handedly broke the sieges laid by Jedi. Over a thousand Jedi perished in the battles he led. The third tomb on Korriban belonged to one Mark Aragnos. He was a Sith-human hybrid who ruled hundreds of years after Tulak Horde. Feared, obeyed, and admired among the Sith, Ragnos was considered to have been the greatest Dark Lord of the Sith of his age. After gaining the mantle of a Dark Lord, he led ruthless campaigns against his Sith enemies. Pitting his adversaries against each other and ensuring that there were no threats to his throne. Remember, this was a time when Sith vied for power amongst themselves. His iron-fisted rule would last over a century. During those times, Ragnos made many astonishing accomplishments. He created a scepter capable of siphoning the Force from many different places, which could be used to empower non-Force users, and designed a pair of gauntlets capable of augmenting the strength of the Force in its user. Years deep into his rule, Ragnos, as Dark Lord of the Sith and the ruler of the Sith Council and Sith Empire, was petitioned by a thirteen-year-old boy named Tenebrae. The youth had come before Mark Ragnos to ask for training in the Sith arts and for recognition as the ruler of his father's domain, a planet he ruled. Although he declined to take him as an apprentice, Lord Ragnos was impressed by Tenebrae's power and ambition, and named him the ruler of the planet, bestowing on him the rank of Sith Lord and the name Vitiate. Suffice to say, Ragnos was right, for Vitiate would later on do unspeakable things. After years of his rule, Mark Ragnos passed away. His death was marked as the end of a golden age of the Sith Empire, despite its reluctance to continue expansion. Naga Sado, a powerful dark magician, Naga Sado was remembered long after his death as a master of Sith alchemy, who had the ability to twist the natural order of the universe to serve his purposes. With his magic, Sado could transform the living into monstrous, brutal beasts, his own malformed servants of death, and, it was said, to give flesh to those spirits already departed. Sado could also focus his gift of alchemy and magic into greater displays of force power, including causing supernovas and solar flares to cover his retreat at the end of the Great Hyperspace War. But Sado's power in the Force went beyond just the Sith alchemy that he was known and feared for. Sado was incredibly potent at creating illusions, focusing his energy for such pursuits in his Sith meditation sphere. Sado had the ability to conjure hundreds of illusions at once and manifest them light years away, 
However, Sado was not able to sustain these illusions when his concentration was even briefly broken. Marga Sado was a rebel, believing that only he could determine his place in the galaxy, refusing to bow to tradition and daring to fight against what he saw as the Sith Empire's stagnation and complacency. This rebelliousness was fueled by a sense of responsibility he felt to his exile ancestors, whom he recalled as great Jedi who created a flame that Sado refused to let burn out. A brilliant strategist, Sado's strength lie not in direct confrontation, but in his mastery of the ability to intuit where his foe was weakest, and then strike precisely and devastatingly. As a Sith Lord, however, Sado was no stranger to individual combat, and often employed telekinesis while in single combat, pausing his sword strikes to pelt his opponents with stones using the Force. He was a visionary who defined the standard beliefs of the Sith. He held respect for different peoples and cultures. Sado was adept at playing the role of caring host when it suited him, and such instances were very short-lived. He was vicious and precise in his strike, once given an opening. He felt no remorse at destroying a star system or transforming his most loyal servants into mindless beasts, for such things suited his needs. Much like the master before him, Nagasado was killed by his apprentice after teaching him the Sith secrets he knew. It is said that to set foot in the tomb of Nagasado is to breathe in death itself. This tomb on Korriban became a nest for terentetic beasts, which feasted on Force sensitives and brought the deaths of several great Jedi. The tomb, however, did not contain Nagasado's remains. Instead, his remains were placed elsewhere. The tomb also contained droid sentries, which protected its inner chambers, guarding something. While these four are not the only tombs of Korriban, they stand as the most important and remembered. As for its future, in her final moments, Kreia predicted that Korriban shall be as it always was, a graveyard for the darkest of the Sith Lords, still whispering within their tombs. It shall always be a source of evil, spawning threats throughout the millennia. It, like Malakor, brushes the edges of the Empire that waits in the dark. And like Malakor, the Sith have forgotten it for a time. They will remember sooner than we think.